hands. The peculiarities of Nigeria, they fully understand. I'm talking about the host country now. And if I know that a lot of students have this challenge when they are trying to go do some admission, they have some peculiarities, either they don't get something sent, but with this, our recruiters, you can be rest assured that everything you want will be done in one phase and you will get your admission. So it is a good thing, which I believe to work with the recruiters for this year. We also like to ask Mr. Perea, listener, do you have a response to what Mrs. Adishola Undo has said? Because I know you are the, you are the student, you are the rep you are from the this Dublin City University from the International Students Office. Speaking with you on this kind of webinar, in this webinar, it's a privilege. So we'd like you to just give a response to what Mrs. Kundu has said earlier. Thank you, Mr. Abisna. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think everything that she has said is um, correct. Um, you know, like she has gone through a very good summary of everything that has to be other pertains to this year from the programs that we offer to like why to choose this year and also going through I guess like the application process. You know, everything seems very straightforward and very well explained. But if there are like any specific questions about any particular section, I mean but I'm happy to answer any of these questions. Mr. Perry, you can't we can't hear you clearly here. Oh really? I'm so sorry about that. Is it any better now? Yeah, it's a bit better. A little yeah, better. okay. Sorry about yeah. that. Okay. Sorry about that. The, the internet in my house is not that great. Um yeah, so what I was saying was that what Mr. Dishola said, um is very very straightforward and like it's sort of like captures in very very brief terms like exactly like everything that you need to know about dcu um you know from the programs that we offer we have like a wide variety of um programs to offer students um both on the masters and the undergraduate side and we also have provisions for foundation for students who do not meet the undergraduate um, um um requirements you know so she has gone through everything like very very briefly and very succinctly but if there are any specific questions about any part of the um presentation i am more than happy to answer any of those questions thank you very much mr perrier Krishna. And Professor Oladipo, I hope you your question, you could hear him better now. And he has done a bit of explanation. Yes, 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 that is. Okay, okay. So I would like to also leave the floor now for Mrs. Ada Dugan. She's going to tell us about the undergraduate, undergraduate and the postgraduate fee structure. And you know, the good thing about working and schooling is that if you can work and school at the same time, it saves a whole lot and it gives you an incentive to want to go to DCU. So I would like to, Mrs. Ada Dugan, she'll be telling us about the employment skills permit and also the undergraduate and the postgraduate fees structure. Mrs. Dugan, over to you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ola. Good evening, everyone. I'll just like to touch on very quickly the robust and wide variety of undergraduate degree courses at the Dublin City University, particularly with regard to the fee structure. Now we talk about, first we start off with the Faculty of Engineering and Computing. And uh, this is a duration of one year only. The cost is 15,500 euros upon completion, on, on successful completion of the first year, students progress to the chosen degree program, which is the second to the fourth year. Now with the bachelor's of engineering, which is a four year study program, the special feature includes a six month internship. 
the cost is 15,500 per annum. You have an option to do an extra year, masters in electronic engineering, mechanical and manufacturing engineering, once you meet the grade requirement at the end of year two. And you can see here the list of courses being electronic and computer engineering, mechatronic engineering, sustainable systems and energy engineering, mechanical and manufacturing engineering, as well as biomedical engineering. We also have the course Bachelor of Science, which is a four-year program comprising computing for business, computer science, data science and the cost is 15,500 euros per annum. You have the BSc in Global Challenges with the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences falling under this. You have the BA in Journalism, a three-year program, study program with a two-month internship. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. We have the BA in Communication Studies, which is a three-year program, study program. The fee is also 15,500 euros per annum. You have the BSc in Multimedia, also a three-year pro uh, study program. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. You have the BA in Social Sciences and Cultural Innovation, a three to four-year study program. The special feature of this is that you can study abroad. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. You have the BA in Applied Language and Translation Studies, comprising French, German, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese. It's a four-year study program. And the special feature is that you can study abroad. It, this costs 14,500 euros per annum. You have the Bachelor of Civil Law a three to four year study program. Another special feature is that you can study abroad. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. You have the BA in economics, politics and law. Another three to four year study program. Special feature, you can also study abroad. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. You have the BA in jazz and Contemporary Music Performance, which is a four-year study program. You could also study abroad, and the cost is 15,500 euros. There's a BA in International Relations, a three to four-year study program, which also offers you the opportunity to study abroad. The cost is also 15,500 euros. You have the BA in Climate and Environmental Sustainability, which is a three to four year study program, but it also offers the opportunity to study abroad. The cost is 14,500 euros per annum. You have the Bachelor of Arts, which is joint honors, three to four years study program. You also have the opportunity to study abroad. This costs 15,500 euros per annum. And subjects offered include English, geography, history, international languages, French, German, Spanish, law, politics, media studies, philosophy, theology, and religious studies, human development, and music. We also have the Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, which is a four-year study program. The cost is 14,500 euros per annum. We have the BSc in Education and Training, another four-year study program. The cost is also 14,500 euros per annum. We have the Bachelor of Business Studies, which is a three to four-year study program. <laughs> the special feature is a 12-month internship, and this costs 14,500 euros per annum. We have the BA in Accounting and Finance, which is a three-year study program. The cost is 14,500 euros per annum. We have the BSc in Marketing, Innovation and Technology, a four-year program. 
The special feature is that it offers a 12-month internship. The cost is 14,500 euros per annum. We have the Bachelor of Business Studies International, which is also a four-year study program. We feature special feature that offers you the opportunity to study abroad. The cost is 14,500 euros per annum. And this comprises French, German, Spanish, Chinese, and Japanese. We have the BS in aviation management with pilot studies. This is a four year study program with a four month internship. The cost is 14,500 euros per annum. We have the BSc in digital business and innovation, which is a four year study program. The special feature includes a 12 month internship and the cost is 14,000 500 euros per annum. Now we go to the Faculty of Science and Health. We have the Chemical Sciences General Entry, which is the first year only. Upon successful completion, students progress to year two of their chosen degree program. The study, this study, uh, first year study costs 15,500 I've mentioned that upon successful completion, students progress to year two of their chosen degree program, which could be a BSc in analytical science. It could also be a BSc in chemical and pharmaceutical sciences, or a BSc in chemistry with artificial intelligence. The physics general entry program is a first year program only and the cost is 15,500 euros. Upon successful completion, students progress to year two of their chosen degree program, which could be a BSc in physics with biomedical sciences, or a BSc in physics with astronomy, or a BSc in applied physics, or a BSc in physics with data analytics. We've said this costs 15,500 euros. You could, you could also study a biological sciences general entry. For the first year only, this costs 15,500 euros. Upon successful completion, students progress to year two of their chosen degree program, which could be a BSc in physics with biomedical sciences, or a BSc in physics with astronomy, or a BSc in applied physics or a BSc in physics with data analytics. There's also the opportunity of studying a biological sciences general entry for the first year only. Upon successful completion, students progress to year two of their chosen degree program, which could be a BSc in biotechnology or a BSc in genetics and cell biology or a BSc in bio processing. Now this costs 15,500 euros for the first year only. There's also the BSc in analytical science, which is a four-year study program. The special feature is a six-month internship, and this costs 15,500 euros per annum. There's also the BSc in chemical and pharmaceutical sciences, which is another four-year program with a special feature of a six month study internship. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. There's also the BSc in environmental science and technology, which is a four year study program, also with a six month internship. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. There's also the course BSc in biotechnology, which is a four year study program, also with a six month internship. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. We also offer the BSc in genetics and cell biology, which is a four year study program with a six month internship. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. Also a cost in B a BSc in sports science and health, a four year study program with six month internship. The cost is also 15,500 euros per annum. There's also the BSc in athletic therapy, therapy and training, 
which is a four-year study program with a three to five month internship. The cost is 18,000 euros per annum. There's also a course, a BSc in health and society, a four-year study program. And this costs 15,500 euros per annum. There's also the BSc in psychology, which is a four-year study program with a 14-week internship program. And this costs 15,500 euros. There's also a BSc in psychology and mathematics which is a four-year study program with a 14-week internship or six to eight, eight months internship. The cost is 15,500 euros. There's a BSc course in psychology and disruptive technologies, a four-year study program with 14-week internship or six to eight months internship. The cost is 15,500 euros per annum. And of course, we have the common entry into actuarial and financial mathematics, leading to degrees in BSc in actuarial mathematics or BSc in financial mathematics. For the first year only, you have an eight month internship and this costs 15,500 euros. Now we see, can see that we have a very robust and wide variety of undergrad programs. We will now go on to the postgraduate degree program, which is also very robust. Permit me a few minutes to share my screen with you. We offer courses, postgraduate degree courses, such as the MEng in Masters in Engineering in Electronic and Computer Studies. This costs 18,000 euros per annum. And you have five specialisms. You either have the September, you can go for the September or January entry, whereby you have five specialisms, Internet of Things, Nanotechnology, Image Processing and Analysis, Advanced Data Network, and Semiconductor and Plasma Technology. As I said, this costs 18,000 euros per annum. You also have the Masters in Engineering in Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, whereby you have four specialisms, which could be Biomedical Engineering, Sustainable Systems and Energy, Simulation Driven Design, Advanced Manufacturing. This costs 18,000 euros per annum. You could also have the MSc in computing with three specialisms, the data analytics, artificial intelligence, secure software engineering. This also costs 18,000 euros per annum. We also offer the MSc in electronic and computer technology, which costs 18,000 euros per annum, and the MA in data protection and privacy law. This costs 16,000 euros per annum. We go on to the Faculty of Science and Health, the School of Biotechnology. We offer the MSc in Diagnostics and Physician Medicine, 14,500 euros. The MSc in Bioprocess Engineering, which costs 16,000 euros. The School of Mathematical Sciences also offers MSc in financial mathematics. This costs 16,000 euros. The MSc in astrophysics and relativity. This costs 16,000 euros. Going on to the School of Nursing, Psychotherapy and Community Health. We offer the MSc in health and social inclusion, which costs 16,800 euros. The MSc in psychology and well-being which costs 16,000 euros. The MSc in psychology, which costs 16,000 euros, as well as the master in chaplaincy studies and pastoral work, which costs 16,000 euros. We, we also have the DCU Business School, 
which is accredited. It offers the MSc in Management, Aviation and Leadership that costs 19,000 euros. The MSc in, MSc in Management, Business, which costs 17,000 euros. The MSc in Management, Strategy, which costs 17,000 euros, the MSc in Human Resource Management, which costs 17,500 euros, the MSc in Finance, which costs 17,000 euros, the MSc in Digital Marketing, which costs 17,000 euros, the MSc in International Accounting and Business, which costs 17,000 euros, as well as the MSc in Global Management, which costs 17,000 euros. Europe. We go on to the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, the School of Communication. We offer the MA in Social Media Communication, which costs 16,000 euros. The MA in Journalism, which costs 16,000 euros as well. The MSc in Emerging Media, which costs 16,000 euros. The MA in Political Communication, which costs 16,000 euros. The MSc in Science and Health Communication, which costs 16,000 euros. The MSc in Public Relations and Strategic Communication, which also costs 16,000 euros. The MSc in Climate Change, Policy, Media, and Society, which costs 16,000 euros. The MA in Documentary Practice, which costs 16,000 euros. We also go to the School of Law and Government. We offer the LLM, Masters of Law, which costs 16,000 euros. The MSc in Public Policy, which costs 16,000 euros. MA in International Security and Conflict Studies, 16,000 euros per annum. The MS, MA in International Studies, International Relations, sorry, which costs 16,000 euros the MA in Data Protection and Privacy, Law and Computing, which costs 16,000 euros. The European Master in Law, Data and Artificial Intelligence, which costs 16,430 euros. With regard to the School of Applied Languages and Intercultural Studies, we offer the MA in Translation Studies, cost structure is 16,000 euros. The MSc in Translation Technology, which costs 16,000 euros as well. The MA in Refugee Integration, which costs 16,000 euros. The School of Theology, Philosophy and Music offers the MA in Theology and World Religion. This costs 16,000 euros. The School of English, MA in Creative Writing costs 16,000 euros. MA in Children's and Young Adults Literature costs 16,000 euros. The School of History and Geography, the MA in History costs 16,000 euros. So you see that we have a very rich and robust and variety of undergrad and postgraduate studies all costed in euros, and we must realize that the euros, the exchange rate of the euro to the Naira, for instance, in Nigeria is a lot lower than that of um, Naira to pound sterling. So this makes studying in Dublin City University very attractive for both the undergrad and the um, postgraduate studies. Very quickly, I'm going to go through the Employment Skills Summit as well. So just give me a minute to share my screen. So as a student, Adeshala had mentioned earlier that as a student, you are permitted to work for 20 hours a week during school term and 40 hours a week during the holidays. Upon completion of your studies, 
as an undergrad, you can apply for a one year. Just a minute. Upon completion of your studies, you can apply for a one year work study visa, the class 1G for the undergraduate program. For the postgraduate program, it's also class 1G, but it's for a two years work study visa. So long as you apply, there's a caveat, so long as you apply within six months of receiving your final results. And this enables you to begin to look for a job, start around for a job and gain employment in Ireland, and maybe start your journey towards residency or citizenship. Please note that postgraduate students and PhD students are permitted to be accompanied with family members. And this makes the postgraduate study very attractive because you are permitted to be accompanied with family members. If you gain employment in a critical skill employment, you can, before the expiry of your student's work visa, apply for a critical skill permit, class one visa. And the critical skills occupation list can be found on, on the internet, the enterprise.gov.ie. All the information can be found there. Now, The critical skills employment permit replaces the green card type of employment permit. And it is important to know about this critical skills permit employment because it may guide your choice of study at the Dublin City University, especially for non-EU persons who would like to stay on in Ireland and work. The Critical Skills Employment Permit is designed to attract highly skilled people into the labor market with the aim of encouraging them to take up permanent residence in the state. Eligible occupations under this type of permit are deemed to be critically important to growing Ireland's economy. They are highly demanded and highly skilled and in significant shortage of supply in Ireland's labor so you have occupations such as ICT professionals, professional engineers and technologists being catered for under this type of employment permit. And the list of eligible occupations is set out in the critical skills occupation list, which I'm going to go through in a minute. The employment category includes production managers and directors, site managers, ICT professionals, being IT specialist managers, IT project and program managers, IT business analysts, architects and system engineers, designers, programmers and software development professionals, web design and development professional. It also includes information technology and telecommunication directors and professionals. The employment category includes health and social services managers and directors. It includes health professionals, medical practitioners, psychologists, Industrial pharmacists, pharmacists, radiographers, dietitians, podiatrists, chiropodists, physiotherapists, nursing and midwifery professionals. It includes natural and social science professionals, medical laboratory scientists, engineering professionals such as civil engineers, Structural engineers and site engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, electronic engineers, design and development engineers, production and process welfare professionals, and social workers. The critical skills occupation list also 
includes business, research, and administrative professionals, such as chartered and certified accountants, tax consultants, business and financial project management professionals, actuaries, economists, and statisticians. It includes architects, town planners, planners, and surveyors, welfare professionals, social workers, quality assurance and regulatory professionals. It includes environmental health professionals, artistic, literary, and media professionals, as well as sales, marketing, and related associate professionals. Kindly note that this list is by no means exhaustive and can be altered from time to time. The advantages of the critical skills employment permit include the fact that due to the fact that the skills are already identified as being in short supply, a labor market test is not required. Also, permit holders can apply for immediate family reunification, sorry, and bring their family, their dependents, their partners, and spouses to be resident in Ireland. This dependent partner spouse employment, employment permit is currently issued free of charge. Permit holders can also apply to the Irish Naturalization and Immigration Service for permission to reside and work without the requirement of an employment permit due upon completion of the critical skills employment permit duration. It also confers full Irish employment rights law upon the permit holders. Also, the employment permit holder may, after serving one year in employment with the original employer, as specified in the employment permit, change employer. But this is subject to applying for a new employment permit, and which is subject to the policy at the time. Please note that all necessary information regarding the critical skills employment permit can be found online on the enterprise.gov.ie and irishimmigration.ie website. So with this, I'll say thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please, you may begin to post them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ada. Do that for your presentation. That was a whole lot. So everything is just precise and straight to the answer. I like this kind of recruitment that the, your, the recruiters have solved 90% of the hurdles you are going to come across when you're trying to apply to Dublin City University. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. I would like to now say the floor is open for questions and answers. Like I said in the beginning, what quite, in fact, it would be still shocking to have more questions because a lot has been explained to make the process quite easy for us to understand. Tell your family, tell your friends, Dublin City University is the place to go to because a lot of things are being offered. The rec recruitment process is very seamless, admission requirements. And the most important thing is the employment skill set after. That's what we want. And I'm glad Dublin City University is offering all this through the recruiters here in Nigeria. So I would like to say the floor is open. If you have a question and answer, please, we will take them right now. Thank you. Questions, please. Can you unmute or raise up your hand? If you ask, okay, we have Professor Ladipo. He seems to want to ask questions and hopefully would help us with the students that will be coming for the postgraduate student, um, courses. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, uh, the recruiters. It's a very, very important and timely. 
uh, information for everybody around here. Like you know, in the last few years, uh, a number of uh, Nigerian graduates are uh, uh, trying to relocate for some reasons best known to all families in Nigeria, including my own family. <laughs> I have four boys, three of them are not in Nigeria. So, <laughs> so the last one that is in the University of Lagos also is planning to jump after, <laughs> after his first degree. So, and uh, most of the candidates look at two major things. Number one, the cost of the program, then opportunities to get very good job after their, uh, their programs. These are two major things that are, that are very critical in the choice of um, institutions to go. So the school fees, then opportunities for jobs, so in the school fees, they may look at um, the scholarship opportunities, the mode of payments, these two areas. If there are opportunities for scholarship, I'm sure they will love that. And the mode of payment, if the school fees is, um, as you mean, is 20,000, uh, euros and you they are able to pay maybe 40 percent and uh, subsequently they have the opportunity of paying 30 30 in inst uh, installments that will also be an opportunity for them to pick your institution then after that what are the chances of getting a good job. So I love what you did by showing them job opportunities so that that will make them make their choice of the kind of course they want to pick right from here. Not that they just want to be in the university and on getting there and uh, on completion of their programs, they may not have the opportunity of getting a very good job. And so what you are doing is right. And um, Please, I will want you to please enlighten us on your mode of payment of the school fees. The installments, maybe 40% initial payment before the cars, or 60% before the cars. Then on resumption, they have an opportunity of paying once or twice. And these are the things they look at because most of them may not even have the opportunity of getting 90%, 80%, 70% of the school fees before going. And that's one. Then the payment challenges in Nigeria today. The, it's a major problem. The payment mode from the CBN is an, because most of the students lost their admissions last year because of the CBN uh, regulations. And so what's what are the um, mode of payments that will be, that may be considered as um, at, on the alternative for them when they are making uh, your institution as their choice? Thank you. Um, I guess, like, can I take the, the questions? Thank you so much for the questions. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Um, yeah, so to answer the questions that you have asked, I think those questions are very, very important questions to, to ask. Um, so at the moment, DCU has or allows, you know, students to make payments in two installments for undergraduates and postgraduate programs. 
So students can choose to pay their fees in 60% before the start of the first semester and then 40% before the start of the second semester. And the reason why we cannot go lower than that is the Irish immigration has a particular th uh, threshold that students need to have paid before they can get a visa to come study in Ireland. So we want to allow students to be able to come um, to this year. Um, and as for the payment challenges, I am um, like DCU is fully aware of the payment challenges, like the challenges are not affecting only DCU. And um, yeah, the issue of like foreign exchange is a really, really big one. And we are trying as much as possible to see if there are ways that we can solve it for students. But to be honest, at the moment, the best that we can say to students is that they should start the process as soon as they can. Like as soon as they start to consider coming to study abroad, they should start, if they want to get um, the money through the CBN, they need to start the process as early as possible. I think now they're saying that it will take at least like three months um, before CBN can remit the fees, you know, the only other alternative which would make the fees a lot more expensive would be to go through the black market. Those are the only um, options available at the moment. But we are definitely like keeping our eyes open for like any other like innovative solutions that exist um, to try to ease the problems of, of students. And then um, speaking on scholarships that are available, I know Mrs. Adishola already touched on it. Uh, we have a merit scholarship at the moment that's worth 2,000 euros um, for very high-flying students. So typically students who are interested in doing a master's, if they have gotten a first class in their first degree, they have a very good chance of getting that 2,000 euros. It's not a lot, but at least like it helps to ease the burden as much as possible and um, we are also currently like in the process of reviewing our scholarships as well and um, so hopefully by next year we'll have like a bit more robust uh, offerings on that aspect and then the final point that you you mentioned about careers i think that one is a very 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 important um, aspect and i like that um that i already went through you know, the critical skills pathway. And, you know, that's one of the things that Ireland is trying to use to attract, like, really highly qualified um, um, individuals. But one thing that you also do to support students, it's not just about, like, giving them um, the academic training. The academic training is very, very important, but we want them to be able to use that degree that they've gotten in the professional setting, you know, so one of the things that DC does is we have a very strong um, career service that is like really, really active. They organize a lot of networking events um, for students where they bring a lot of those employers that you saw in that slide that Ms. Adishola showed, you know, um, they bring a lot of those employers to campus for students to start to build those networks. They organize like a lot of um, consulting and um, about they give students like the op opportunity to have like one-on-one -on -one consultations with like experts, you know, where the experts would look at their CV and try to um fine-tune them for the Irish job markets, you know. Um they also organize like a lot of like mock interviews for students, you know, to help prepare them before they go for like their actual um, interview. So these are just some of a, a few things that TCU does to try to ensure that students um, get those jobs. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, our graduate employment rate is pretty high. But again, one thing to note is, it's not to say that immediately a student comes to DCU, a job is waiting for them automatically. They still need to apply themselves. Like it's um, the amount of passion and the amount of energy that it puts into it that would yield results. I could give you like a couple of examples of, and um, there's a student that came from Nigeria last year 
um, to, to do the electronic engineering program. One of the main things that he was worried about the most was um, finding a job afterwards. And I just kept like reassuring him, telling him, okay, this is what you need to do. You know, first things first, like, you know, and when he came, he came in November of last year. And as soon as he came, he took advantage of like the career service and started to fine tune CV and started to apply for jobs even before he finished his program. And he called me, I think it was in February or March, saying that he had gotten a full time critical skills role uh, before he had finished his his program. You know, so that's just a testament, like to just say that it is possible for students to get it, but they need to apply themselves. They need to put in the time and effort and the energy um, to get those opportunities. Thank you very much for that. Um, one thing, um, again, is the issue of the preparation for the payment. Like you said, you said maybe the candidate should try to prepare like three months before the time um, concerning the payment, I mean. But someone who has not been offered admission may not start to process the payment. That's always the problem. He has to get the admission before he starts to pay or to be, before he starts to look for money and uh, starts to uh, process the school fees. So that's why admission needs to be done uh, at least six months before resumption, at least six months before resumption so that the candidates will be able to prepare uh, for uh, the payments considering the uh, CBM policy in Nigeria today, how many parents will be able to go and uh, buy black market for 10,000 pounds, 15,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds? It's not easy. But CBN has reduced it. And if there is the opportunity to use the CBN uh, platform, that will be cheaper for parents and it will be easier for students as well. So uh, if admission is, uh, if admission policy says at least you have to uh, apply nine uh, months before the time, or at least six months before the time, that will give them the opportunity. And they have the verdict whether the person has been uh, admitted or not. Then the visa is another thing. When the person pays, then is uh, this visa process also uh, may determine the payment. So these are the things. That's also good. I didn't say the university should look for a job for them. I said university should advise in um, giving them uh, well, something like career uh, advice that will enable them to pick uh, jobs that will give them opportunities to get you know, uh, exposed and um, opportunities to have better jobs afterwards. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying the university should give them, no, 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 no. University cannot provide every graduate a job. I'm also in the system and I know how it works. So <laughs> thank you, well done. I appreciate your efforts. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's that's one thing. We try to open up the, um, application portal like as early as possible so typically we only have one intake for a majority of our programs so students who want to study this year would start in september of this year but the application portal opened since november of last year that gives them almost at least like seven or eight months you know, for students to be able to apply, you know, so that's one of the things that we try to do. Like as soon as the um, application portal is open, we try to encourage students to send in their applications because as soon as the student sends an application, it will take at least a month um, for them to get a response from DCU, you know, so the sooner they can send in the applications, the better um, um, their chances of getting the CBN and thing. And yeah, like I totally agree yeah, that, uh, you know, the university's job is just to provide like as much support as possible. And that's one thing that DCU tries to do through our career service, you know, is to provide support, as much support as we can um, to the students. 
I was actually going to ask um Perry, um sure. will there be an opportunity for <clears throat> students who gain admission to defer their admission for another session? Because I was speaking with a colleague today and he actually said he was trying to sponsor his um big brother to another university in Ireland. But unfortunately in their country, which is even India, they had um they had this type of CBN thing that we too also have. And he said his brother couldn't um go in. That was January this year. So I said if he had spoken with me before now, that I would have told him that he could they could defy it. So I told him that I would check with DCU so that probably can send in his application through DCU. And maybe if they're unable to get in at all, then they could defer. Is that a, a window open? And how many years? For how many years can they defer their, their what's it called now? The offer, the admission, please. Okay, yes. Um, DCU definitely allows um, students to defer their offers but the student needs to have a firm offer and they need to accept that offer when they're like to accept the offer they need to pay at least 500 euros deposit once they've made that non-refundable deposit they can defer their offer for one year you know so if the student wants to start for this year um, and they've gotten a firm offer and they've paid their deposits they can defer it to next year or once they've deferred it once, they cannot defer again. Okay, okay. I think that's um. I mean that means at least that okay. If you if you're really serious, you want to go into the university, pay five hundred euros deposit. It can be deferred for one year only. So before anyone would even pay that five hundred euros, would have thought very far through. Am I going to go in next year? Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, um, Professor Sidi was here a few minutes ago. She's left now. She was the one who was asking about the, um, uh, if there's a way DCU would want to collaborate with um, other universities uh, for blended program. She called it 1424. That is maybe two years in, um, uh, two years online and two years, I mean, on site or one year offline and one, I mean, online and three years on site and all that. Is there any prospects to that? Mm. Yes, um, DC is definitely open to exploring the options of partnerships with a variety of universities. But um, to be honest, like that is not like within my remit. There is a partnerships office within the university that would be able to go through the process, you know. So if um she wants to know what the process would entail, I could pass her details to the partnerships team and they will be able to explain um, the process a bit better. So. Okay, that's fine. Do we have other questions, please? Rest of... Last of senior, you were here last um Monday as well. And Toby, do we have any further questions from Professor Ladipo? We hope Professor oh. Ladipo will send his um students to us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. That reminds me also of the issue of partnership. Um, if your university will be able to partner with the University of Lagos in the area of uh, admission of direct entry students. Direct entry students, uh, by this I mean our students who wrote the advanced level here that we call JUPEF in Nigeria. Uh, we have a number of um, universities in Europe where our students can also join, um, maybe, uh, to do their two years or three years, as may be agreed in the in the collaboration and partnership agreements. I think the Jupe is like our own foundation. Am I right? Yes, yes. It's pre-university. So well, the... not pre-university, and it's at advanced level. It's advanced. It's like uh, HSC. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I'm aware of the JUPEP, but I think for for it to be taken um, by DC, like the um, admissions team will definitely want to have like further um, like inquiries to try to understand. Oh, yes. and, like, there is the how match, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Perry, if yeah. that could be done, it would be between the two universities. Mm. There, there should be normal agreement, discussions, and uh, understanding of how things work and uh, uh, interpretation of their uh, uh, scores and all that. Yes, yes. All yes. that needs to be done between the two universities. Just like I said, you you are you may not be in the uh, capacity to do that for the university, but uh, the Department of International Linkages and the uh, Partnership should be able yes. to do that. Yes, yes. So maybe Perrier, if you can um, enlighten me when we, well, I mean, we're off the the webinar. If there are ways by, if there are any um, requirements or documentations that you need, I can link um, this you up with um, with um, University of Lagos through Professor Oladipo. And then I, I think this is a good avenue as well to work something together, since it's something they do with other universities. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, and the fact that, like, there's, a, uh, like, as you said, like, the precedents with other European universities, that's definitely something that uh, the admissions team know about. So I can always, like, put you in touch with them. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Do we have any further questions before we call it a day? I actually recorded this particular session so that. If we have another session and people ask the same question, we can always play it rather than um, having to pull you out of your of your busy schedule. Do we have any further questions? Okay, I think um, we can call it a day. Um, where is um, Mrs. Olu? Okay, please take it up from there, Paula. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending today, particularly Mrs. Ada Dugan and Mrs. Adeshola Onyiloye Undu and Mr. Perrier Bissina and all the attendees for this webinar. I know your questions have been answered appropriately. Don't forget, if you need more information, do get in touch and more information will be gotten across to you. It will be huge to see a partnership between the Nigeria University and the Dublin City University. On that note, I want to say thank you so much for participating, everyone. And I hope and I wish we'll see soon when we are together in Dublin City University. So thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye thank for you, now. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, God bless. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.